We're only a few weeks away from the election, and you are going to cast your ballot, but who will be the leaders within your area? And joining me today is someone who is running for the mayor of Peak and Mark Luff. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. You've been within leadership there for a while now within the city of Pekin, um, and now you're running for the mayoral spot. What are the issues that you think are facing the city right now that immediately need to be addressed? Well, we do have immediate issues uh, that we've been working on, especially the last couple months, to try to push those. Uh, and we're hoping, we were hoping to get something done uh, before this election in a, a change of the guard, so to speak. Um, but our pension obligation is, uh, first and foremost, our number one priority. Uh, we're $63 million uh, in the hole on this obligation. And when you look at that, um, knowing that the state has mandated that these pension funds be fully funded by 2040, uh, that may seem like a long ways away, uh, but it's a blink of an eye, really. And when you have $63 million to make up, um, it's, you're going to have to have the right leadership uh, in there to guide us through that. But I know a lot of municipalities are looking at issues when it comes to pensions. Um, and a lot of them feel as though, as you were talking about, tied by what's going on in state legislature. That, legislature that, that has to change. Correct. So what realistically can the city of Pekin do to address that, aside from hoping that something changes in Springfield? Well, just to give you some kind of idea of, and, and like you said, a lot of municipalities um, are dealing with this. Um, one issue is, just to give you an idea of how uh, important this truly is, the 12 or 13 percent of the property taxes uh, that the city gets uh, from the community, every single penny of that goes into the pension fund. Communities used to be able to utilize that money uh, for garbage fees, um, for services uh, to the community. And now we're unable to do that because every penny has to go into that obligation uh, in order not to be penalized. Um, but there are options. Uh, we've been approached um, uh, by a firm uh, to look at restructuring our financial aspect of it and how that's going. As we went through that uh, by 2040, if we restructured, uh, we have the potential to save $9.1 million dollars uh, just an in interest. Uh, but there's also uh, cons to that as well. Uh, Any time that you're dealing with the market, um, there's no uh, sure thing uh, out there. Uh, so that brings some stress and anxiety with that option too. Uh, communities also have the option, uh, which I've seen exercised, of selling an asset. Uh, which normally occurs, uh, the two assets that normally occur would be if a municipality owned their own water district or their own wastewater treatment plant. So those are options there that can help with that formula in, and get your head above water uh, for these pension obligations so that when we do hit that 2040, um, uh, Pekin is not solely just obligated to a pension fund like a lot of communities are, are going to be. As far as working through the state, it's important for the leadership of the community to stay uh, in touch with your local reps. Uh, you have to have that relationship there. Um, you have to keep pushing. Um, at some point, uh, it will all come to a head, and decisions are going to have to be made, uh, and people are going to have to step up, uh, and, and it's not a comfortable spot. Um, but it's going to take true leadership uh, to guide us through that. You know, it's interesting that you say, um, you know, when you're talking about some of the taxes and things that are going into pensions, I imagine that then takes away what would be going into a lot of things within the community. Uh, what are the aspects right now within the city of Pekin when it comes to uh, the economy, uh, bringing businesses into the economy that you would say can be done to spark up something even more within the city well, from it's a financial standpoint? It's unfortunate. Uh, actually, Pekin um, is on the map quite a bit for companies coming into Illinois uh, to look to establish themselves. 
unfortunately that communication doesn't get out to the community mm. um, and that's something else that we're changing mm. uh, the communication line has opened greatly uh, in the last year uh, and that's partly due uh, from the restructuring uh, that's been done inside City Hall and the new team members that we've brought in uh, that have done a great job with that. You're saying communication from the city to... To the taxpayers. To, to, okay. Yeah, okay. to the community. Yeah. Um, but we are. We, we've been on the map several times uh, for big things that could come. Um, we have a few right now sitting on the table uh, that will be really good for us. Um, again, adding that to where we're at as a community right now, uh, timing-wise, we have a lot on our plate right now. Um, Pekin is a great community. Uh, it really is. It's, and when I think of this, the pension obligation and the economic development opportunities that we do have, uh, Pekin has never lost its potential. Uh, it's still there. Uh, we just need the right leadership in there to bring that back to the surface, uh, getting the community more involved. And communication is the key uh, to all of it. You know, taxpayers want to feel important, and they want to feel heard. And if you can um, open that door and allow that to happen, people become more involved. Uh, people, when they feel like they're on a team, they become more involved. They become more passionate about their jobs. Uh, they become more passionate about their community. Um, and unfortunately, uh, our communication lines have not been where they should have been. Uh, so we have a lot of rebuilding to do. Uh, but great potential. We're in a great spot. Uh, we have an industrial park uh, that we have a lot of property down there uh, and we're fortunate, which helps put us on the map, is we own all that property, clear and free. So it's, it's a good negotiating piece when manufacturers or other businesses are looking at coming in to put yourself higher on the totem pole. Uh, we have good resources in Pekin. Being on the river helps mm -hmm. too. Um, so yeah, we're in a good, we're in a really good spot right now. One that, uh, that I haven't seen us in this good of a spot for a long time. Well then let me ask you this as kind of a final question here. Um, you talk about your ideas to address the pension issues and you mentioned uh, better communication um, and the fact that you say that Pekin is in a really good spot. How will it be in a better spot if you are elected as mayor, what would you say you bring to the table to get Pekin even further along in its development? What will you bring to that leadership role if you are elected into that space? I think the community has seen the last four years what I bring to the table. Um, I'm not afraid to address issues, uh, as uncomfortable as they might be at the time. Um, I push for accountability. Uh, that's something that we uh, desperately need to get back on track and to move forward. Um, I feel I have good negotiating skills and uh, the community has watched that through our meetings and the projects that I've taken on. Uh, I guess if I put it in simple terms uh, and, and if you ask my wife, I live on the phone, um, I take every phone call that comes to my phone. Uh, but I am on it a lot. Sometimes it may take a day or two back. But I'm a good communicator, uh, and people recognize that. And as long as you have that communication line open, uh, anything can be fixed. Anything can be addressed. Uh, putting it on the back burner uh, for lack of leadership skills to address that uh, is you're never going to get anything done. You have to bring everybody in as a team together. If everybody doesn't feel like they're going to cross the goal line together, then you're, you're not leading correctly. And, and those, those skills uh, are exactly what we need right now. And you have to have somebody who, um, if something needs addressed, like I said, as uncomfortable as it may be, um, it needs to be addressed. Business should never be set aside for political reasons. Um, that's, that's been a hold up for us as well. Uh, and it, it's about getting business done for the community. Uh, and I do that. I do that now. And I'm going to continue to do that. 
uh, in April 2nd. I, I'm fully confident that we're going to have uh, finished off putting together the right team. Uh, and for the first time in quite a while, I, I believe the community will see things happening uh, that they haven't seen for a long time. And I, and I think it's going to excite everybody in town. Um, but like I said, you, you're going to have to have the right leadership there to get that done. All right. Well, I think that's the time we have of Mark Luff running for mayor of the city of Pekin. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Uh, in your quest to, to take over leadership there. Thank you. Right, Appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely.